Hi, y'all. What I'm doing today is I am sewing the corners of some sheets to where they'll fit the bed better. What I'm doing is sewing elastic onto them, the corners of the sheet. Because we need the use of these sheets. I haven't been using them because they won't stay on the corners of the bed. Well, here's a little trick you can do. I'm sewing the elastic on here. I'll show you here in a minute. Let me get this started. Whenever you're going to sew elastic together or onto a piece of cloth or whatever, when you're sewing through elastic, it'll screw up the thread unless you put a piece of fabric over the top of the, the elastic, which is what I've done. I've put a piece of cloth on the top of this uh, elastic here. And sewing right over it. Come on, get over there. Just sew it around in a square here or whatever. All right, now. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not, <clears throat> but here's the corner. Here's the corner of the bed sheet. See, I got my finger up there in the corner of it. There's the seam. And I sewed this piece of elastic on from what, where it'll go for around from one side of the mattress under the corner of the, the mattress and over here to the other side <clears throat> see there's the elastic piece that's going to hold it on see? it's going to go across there and hold it on i wish i could show y'all better but i don't have a a way to record any other way than with this little laptop <clears throat> and it has to sit there stationary but you can get the gist of it right here i think there's the corner and see i sewed this elastic across where it's going to hold that battery hold it onto the mattress and see what i did is i put the sheet on the mattress i sewed one, one end on and then took it over there on the bed and put one, the corner of the sheet on the mattress and stretched its elastic under to where I wanted it to attach on the other side. And I just held it there and came over here and sewed it down. So now I can just use this corner as a pattern for my other corners. I don't have to put it on the bed every time. See this piece of elastic here? That's how I want it. That's the length I want it. So I'm going to take this other piece of elastic and run it on there. And there's my length. And I'll just snip it off like that. And uh, i got to get a piece of cloth, another piece of cloth. Sew that on. I cut these pieces a little too skinny. But I'm going to make it do anyway. Okay. Now, let me set that down right there. I got my pins here. Now, let me see what I've got going here. That pretty much lined up there. Okay, well, where did it go? Here it is. Now, I'm going to take this seam, the seam of this corner, match it up to the seam of the other corner on the other end. See, I just pull them together there. 
and uh, so I know right where to put this other this other piece of, of elastic I'm going to put it get that picked up there I need more than two hands here I'm going to put it on here right like I had that one and then I'm just going to take one pin and pin it down so I can get started there I got it pinned down so now I can get started with that corner I need to turn it which is not easy sometimes that thread just keeps coming around where I don't want it to be now, come on Trying to get that thread back there. Get back. Now, I'm sewing it on with a zigzag stitch. Well, it's a kind of a zigzag stitch. It's a good one I use frequently. Get on over there. Get on over there. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and snip that thread right there. It's bugging me. Now, just turn it this way and back stitch. It's easier, I think. I think. Maybe. <laughs> The whole bed sheets has to be moved sometimes. Okay, here we go. Well, how is y'all's day? How's your day going? Well, so far my day has been so-so. I got up this morning. First thing I did was I made up the bed. And then I vacuumed living room in the hall and then I ate breakfast and then I swept and mopped the kitchen and now I'm doing this I don't like doing projects like this when it comes to sewing I'd rather just make something brand new you know instead of having to do like alterations or repairs that's what I don't like doing is alterations or repairs or like sewing patches on my husband's clothes he loves patches on his clothes and I hate sewing on patches but I do it anyway because he's my husband it makes him happy to have patches so I sew it now, I can just get this pinned down here somewhere. I don't know where I'm going to start sewing on this one. I'm, we'll find out. Now, see, I've, I, see, I'll have this corner done as soon as I sew this down. <clears throat> Well, it has been so humid. I live here in the desert of West Texas, and I love a dry climate. But this this summer has almost every day of this summer, this spring and summer, has been so humid. And it gets on my nerves. It makes my bones hurt, and it makes me sweat like a greasy pig. And it just gets on my nerves. If I wanted to live in humidity, I would have stayed in Central Texas. I do not like humidity. It gets on my nerves. Okay, now I can take that pin out. I'm going to snip that thread there. 
I don't know if or when that humidity is going to end. I don't know if it's going to become a common trend out here or what. The weather is so insane all over the world anymore. I mean, only God knows what's going to happen next. But I think we have a chance of rain coming up. But that don't matter. It's still super humid whether it's going to rain or not. But I do hope we get some rain. We always need it out here in West Texas. Sure does help with watering the trees and the grass. Snip that. Okay, I got this corner done. That really didn't take too long. There's two corners done. You can see I got the elastic on them. Now when I put this sheet on the bed, I just stretch it right under the corners and it's going to stay. This is not a new bed sheet. I bought this at the thrift store in Alpine. We need some new sheets, fitted sheets. We need them. some new ones really bad. Nowadays you can't find good bed sheets. I, I don't guess there's, I don't know of any place where you can get good bed sheets anymore. Used to, they were commonplace everywhere. But now, when you buy a brand new bed sheet, it's already threadbare. Brand spanking new and already threadbare. Now, if you, it don't make any difference. If you buy a bed sheet that's 300 uh, threads per square inch or whatever, that does not make it a better sheet. I'll tell you a little secret to that. Do you know how they managed to get that many threads into a bed sheet? I'll tell you how. They make the th individual th threads so fine and thin. That's how they cram three or four or five hundred, you know, per threads per square inch in there. That's how they thread it. And it's so, the threads are so fine and thin and delicate that you're buying a bed sheet that ain't worth two cents. It, it might as well be thread, threadbare because them fine little delicate threads, they break right away I mean almost right away you use them two or three times you use bed sheet two or three times and you always start noticing little holes coming in yeah because them little fine threads are breaking you can't win and it used it used to be commonplace when you bought bed sheets they were good quality cotton bed sheets good quality and the threads were good and strong and closely woven and those bed sheets lasted and lasted and lasted and lasted but you, you I don't know if you can find anything like that at all anywhere in the world anymore it just seems like anything you get anymore the quality of it just ain't worth ain't worth plug nickel I mean that's why the landfills are so full of full of full up and stuff and, and people throws away so much stuff because the stuff is almost junk when you buy it brand new and so the quality is so piss poor and these manufacturers don't ha take any pride in their products no mm -mm. people used to have take pride in things that they made not anymore nobody cares anymore younger generation they don't know the difference because they weren't around when things were made good but i was i they were still making stuff good when i was you know back when back then i was alive back then when they were still making stuff good quality so that's why i know it makes me so dead gum mad oh <sighs> If I was the president of the United States, I'd straighten some stuff out in this country. We'd go back to having some decent quality products. And I don't mean maybe. You'd either produce good quality products or you wouldn't produce what? Either do it right or don't do it at all. That's the way I was raised. That's why kids used to always be raised. When you do a job, you do it right the first time, or you're going to have to go back and fix it and do it right the next time. Wasn't no two or three ways about it.
Nowadays, people just slop through it. Nobody cares. And that's one of the reasons why the world's coming to an end. Everything's just going to hell. Yeah, I know. I'm an old grouch, but that's because I got too many reasons to grouch. I wish I didn't have any reasons to grouch. Just too many things. It just aggravates me half to death. The frustration of not being able to do anything about it. Or not knowing what to do about it. I guess I'm just an old-fashioned weirdo. I'll tell you what, I'd rather be an old-fashioned weirdo than to be an, a modern dumbass. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. And if some of you listening don't like to hear me say cuss words while well, I'm holding back, I could say a lot worse. And there are people that says a lot worse than I say. And you know it. And don't pretend to have virgin ears because you've heard cuss words all your life because you've lived in this world all your life. You know it, people cuss. It's a human condition to cuss. Everybody in the world cusses. I bet you cuss when nobody's around to hear it. You'll never admit to it in a million years. Everybody cusses because everybody gets aggravated and everybody gets mad. So don't give me that hypocritical crap. Oh, she said the cuss word. Oh, she's going to hell. Uh, well, what are you going to hell for? You ain't perfect either. So what are you going to hell for? Ah. Tell me that. There's people in this world that's just nutty enough, to, self-deceived enough to think they're the only ones going to heaven. Oh, really? You think you're the only one going to heaven? You've never sinned? Did you hang on the cross with Jesus for our sins? Is that how perfect you are? <laughs> Answer me that one. Did you go up to heaven and kick Jesus off the throne because you're so perfect that you've got to be sitting up there on that throne? Answer me that one. When you go to heaven and kick Jesus off the throne, then you can tell me I'm going to hell for cussing. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeppers. The only, you know, sometimes I tell people they're going to hell, and the only time I do is when I know that they're not saved at all, and they're doing horrible things, and they're not the least bit sorry for the horrible things that they do, because they're serving de the devil. Uh, people like that, you know they're going to hell. People who abuse and... Uh, uh, children and people who abuse animals and and they they just they serve the devil they hate God they hate Jesus they hate the Bible and they serve the devil you know they're going to hell because you can't go to heaven without the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior you simply can't and if you ain't going to heaven you're going someplace else and you ain't going to like where you're going <laughs> That's just the truth of the matter. You know, what else can, can I say, you know? Well, maybe this video ain't too awful boring since I gave y'all an earful. <laughs> the old weirdo has spoken again. <laughs> I've been called a weirdo all my life. It used to bother me. I used to cry about it when I was a kid. They'd tell me I was weird and I'd cry. I don't care anymore. It's like, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to take that as a compliment. 
So I'd rather be a weirdo than it'd be like some people. Now I hope I put this on the right way. If I didn't, yeah, I put it on the right way. Just got to get it sewed down here. Because I'm putting it on kind of at, a, at an angle. Okay, there's the third corner. And I'll do the fourth corner. I've been meaning to do this for some time and putting it off because it ain't no fun. Now, which one is which? Oh, boy, let's see. <laughs> which one is which? This one. I've been putting it off for a long time because I just don't like doing a repairs and alterations and stuff. It's a drag, man. It's a drag. But you do, you do what you have to do. Well, put it on right there. Right there. Have another piece of other piece of well, this one's even skinnier than that other one was, but I'm going to have to make it do. Go ahead and cut another piece for the next one, okay? There we go. I had to hold that, the end of it down with my elbow. <laughs> Ran out of hands. I had to use my elbow. There we go. Now, when I get done with this, I'll go down there and put it on the bed, and I'll show you how it's going to fit, how it's going to just strap right onto the bed. Come on now. Come on now. I need to oil this machine. I want to make some blouses and dresses, but I'm going to have to oil this machine before I can do that. It starts making them rattling sounds. You can hear the pieces of metal rattling together. You know it's time to oil the machine. Your machine will last you a long, long time if you keep it oiled. Cut that thread off there. And I, you can look at one of my other videos where I showed you how to clean and oil a machine. Or at least this one. This is a brother. And uh, somebody bought this machine for me brand new from Walmart. About, I'm going to say about 12 years ago. It's been about 12 years ago, something close to it. 11 and a half, 12 years ago. Okay. Now, where's that corner at? Okay, I'm going to bring it on over to here. Pin 
laying her down. Well, I'll show you here in a minute. As soon as I get this done, I'll go put it on the bed. Adjust it there. Now stop there. In case some of y'all are wondering why you see all this uh, blotches and this awful looking stuff on my skin and my stuff on my face and all this, it's because I've ate up with severe extremely severe plaque psoriasis. It is not contagious. It runs in the family. And there's, in every generation, there's at least three people that get afflicted with it. And there's no cure for it, unfortunately. Just that unless God does a miracle and heals it up, I'll be tormented with this the longest day I live and it is torment I can tell you that my uncle Bill has it real bad and my oldest daughter has it it's very embarrassing to go to a public place and have people see my arms and my hands with this, you know, blotches and where I've had to scratch. You have to scratch that stuff out. Sometimes it builds up in your skin and it feels just like shards of glass in your skin. And it it, it itches and it hurts. I mean, it, it rakes against the nerves, the surrounding nerves in your skin, that sharp stuff. And you, you have to get it out of there. The only way to get it out is scrape it out. And so this is the result, you know, all this, all these things here in, in my face. It's in my face. It's in my ears. It's in the back of my neck, my, my scalp. It's, it's just from head to toe, literally. It's even between my toes. Well, what am I turning that on for? I've got to cut this. Oh, am I, am I finished? Am I finished? I think so. Let me see. Oh, am I finished? I'm finished. Okay. Now, I will take this down there and show you how it fits on the bed. Turn it around this way at least. We all can see where I'm walking. <laughs> Maybe. Coming down these stairs. We have steps to our living room. Okay, this this is another bed sheet I've got to make fit this bed. It's king size and our mattress is queen size, so that's gonna be another special that's gonna be a special trouble there. Okay. Now I'll set this down here, and I'll hopefully you can see what I'm doing right here. Well, that's up too high, but I can't help it. Well, anyway, here's the sheet. There's still a clothespin. Look at this. There's still a clothespin stuck to the sheet. <laughs> it, oh, it's stuck real bad. Ooh, I have to be careful so it won't tear the sheet up. It won't tear a hole. Oh, there we go.
this way. Now, now see, look, you put the corner on there. There's the corner. I see you just stretch that elastic on down there and underneath there, and it's going to hold it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's good. You get that elastic right down under, under there, and it's gonna hold that snug. See? Can y'all see it? It's stretched on there, and it's holding it snug. I don't know if you can see it or not. I got it on there. See? It's holding it. Okay. Well, that's it for now. I'll see y'all later in the next project, if the good Lord's willing. Bye.